yesterday class we started looking at uh, RC circuits. Let's quickly review what we did yesterday. Now, uh, <coughs> so we started looking at the most simple, uh, simplest possible uh, RC circuit. So you have a series R and a shunt C. Okay, it is uh, excited by some voltage V S of T, and uh, we said let's take pick one quantity of interest, and we chose that to be the voltage across the capacitor. Okay, and uh, very specifically. Uh, we are looking at cases or so far in the course we have not seen cases where the uh, this excitation okay is a function of time so far we have only seen uh, constant excitations also called direct current or dc voltages or currents okay so we'll for for uh, for the time being we'll assume that this vs of t is some constant okay some constant vs and uh, the Equations that describe the system, okay, you can get those from KVL, KCL, and the elemental relationships. Okay, uh, of course, KVL gives you relationships between the voltages across the current, uh, voltages across the resistors, capacitors, and uh, the input voltage. Okay, in this case, very simple case, the resistor and capacitor, the currents are equal, so IR of T equal to IC of T gives you the KCL relationship. And apart from these two, okay, you have the relationship between the currents and voltages of the resistor and the capacitor okay and now you have uh, four variables and four uh, uh, four unknowns and four equations you can easily solve for any one of these specifically we are interested in vc of t hey don't talk okay very specifically we are interested in uh, vc of t okay so we write down the equation describing the system in terms of vc of t okay and uh, as it so turns out this happens to be a first order differential linear differential equation okay and uh, the relationship describing it is some rc dvc by dt plus vc equal to vs okay you can write this down for uh, you know uh, for any circuit actually for this particular circuit it happens to be a first order linear differential equation this is unlike what we have seen before so far the equations we have seen are all algebraic equations okay so now we need to find out a way to solve this the simplest case is when vs equal to zero that is the homogeneous equation of the system that is RC DVC by DT plus VC equal to 0. So this is the homogeneous equation. Okay, That describes the case when Vs is 0 and you only have you know the resistor and the capacitor in the circuit. Now at you know at first sight it may seem like there is nothing to solve for everything is 0 but in reality okay, this will actually give you a solution which is non-zero. It will also have a non-zero solution because for any differential equation you have to you will have to define the initial conditions that you already know from basic mathematics right whenever you try to solve a differential equation or an integral equation you have to define the initial conditions now there is one specific initial condition which will give you a zero solution for this system that is when the initial voltage across the capacitor is zero if that happens to be non-zero okay uh, you will find that this does have a solution and uh, if you solve this, it's a very simple system to solve. You'll get something like this. You'll get Vc equal to Vc naught exponential minus T by Rc. And uh, here, initial voltage on cap, I'll say this is Vc of Vc at T equal to 0 or Vc of 0. Is that clear? So this is a solution describing the, uh, this is the uh, equation describing the voltage across the capacitor for this system now the minute you see this okay of course it depends on the initial condition if the initial condition is zero then the voltage is at zero now the interesting thing is the argument inside the exponential function also has an rc term okay that rc is called the time constant of the circuit you might have heard this term before it is often represent it has units rc has units of time okay and uh, that is a fairly significant uh, uh, com component of the behavior of the system as we saw as we'll see soon and depending on the value of rc okay the exponential can behave in different ways so if you have a very very large rc okay you'll get a behavior which looks something like this okay the exponential will take a long time to decay obviously at the exponential is bound on two ends right at t equal to 0 it has to have the initial voltage across the capacitor at t equal to infinity 
it has zero voltage, right? All the charge on the capacitor has decayed through the resistor. However, the way it behaves in between, okay, can be very different. And <laughs> if our, if the RC time constant is very large for the circuit, it will take a really really long time to decay. If the RC time constant was very small, okay, it will decay much faster. As simple as that, okay. And uh, similarly, if you decide to plot the current through the capacitor, okay, that can also be shown to behave in a similar way, okay. So you have a basic exponential relationship, but then depending on the RC time constant, it can be smaller or larger. The initial slope of this curve, okay, is also also happens to depend on RC. How do you find that out? The initial slope is nothing but dVc by dt at t equal to zero, and that is simply minus Vc of 0 by Rc in this case. Okay? If your initial voltage is 5 volts, the initial slope is minus 5 by Rc and that should tell you, right? If, if Rc is very large, okay, the slope will be very small, it will decay very slowly. Okay? If Rc is very, very small, the initial slope is very large, it will start falling much faster. Okay? It's a much faster decaying exponential. The next uh, thing that we discussed was in the case when Vs was non-zero but constant and in that case you get an equation which looks like this okay <coughs> and we replace the uh, expression the variable Vc with a new variable which is Vc1 which is Vc minus Vs and in this particular case because Vs is constant dVc1 by dt was equal to dVc by dt now you can reduce your original equation to the homogeneous form which has a known solution already and that happened to be this expression Vc1 was Vc10 exponential minus t by Rc and now you just go back and replace the variables okay? and you, you get the expression for Vc of t. This is nothing but Vs plus Vc of 0 minus Vs exponential minus t by RC. <laughs> and now you can see if you have a non-zero Vs, okay, and in fact, let us look at this separately and then we will go back to reviewing again. If I have a non-zero Vs, so let us say Vs is here this is Vs ok and let us say Vc of 0 is 0 the curve is an exponential depending on the time constant of the circuit ok so let us say it has a behavior like this it has some asymptotic behavior like this ok so it starts off uh, from 0 because Vc of 0 is 0 Vc of 0 is 0 ok the initial slope Okay, what is that? What is the initial slope? <laughs> Vs by Rc. Okay, the initial slope is Vs by Rc. We saw this yesterday. Okay. So the initial slope is Vs by Rc. <laughs> now, the case which we did not look at was the case when Vc of 0 was not 0, what do you think will happen? Suppose I told you that there is a second case where Vc of 0, let us say Vs was 5 volts, ok. So, I will call this 5 volts. This is 5 volts by Rc. Now, I have the second case where let us say Vc of 0 was uh, 2 volts ok what will the curve look like now what will the new curve look like so Vc of 0 plus ok at t equal to 0 plus has to be equal to Vc of t equal to 0 minus why is that why would I put this condition
VC of zero was zero, right? Why should it be continuous at that point? Why should of why should VC of zero plus not continuous? Why should VC of zero plus be equal to VC of zero minus? This is what I am saying. What will happen if this condition is violated? There has to be an infinite current. Remember that the capacitor has a differential relationship, right? If your <coughs> if VC of zero plus was different from VC of zero minus, there needs to be an infinite current flowing through the circuit, okay? Which is not possible in most cases. Now there are very specific cases where it is possible, okay? But in majority of cases that is not possible. So you apply this condition: VC of zero plus equal to VC of zero minus. Okay, so which is why we'll say that we see of zero is two volts. So what will happen? Your voltage would have been two volts before uh, uh, when t is less than zero, and it will start off from two volts. Okay, and then you will get an exponential. What is the final voltage across the capacitor? This is 5 volts. This is R. This is C. This is VC. Right? What is the final voltage across the capacitor? It has to be 5 volts. Okay. So you'll see an exponential which looks like this. <laughs> what is the initial slope of the exponential? Will it be lesser or greater? Lesser. How much is it lesser? What is the actual? What is the initial slope? Yeah. So what is that here? This is 3 by RC. It is Vs minus Vc of 0 by RC. You can go back and plug it into this equation if you want. Okay. You will get the same thing. <laughs> go back and plug it into this equation. Okay. Figure out the initial slope, and you should get this. Now, okay, without looking at the equation, can you intuitively say why this has to be true? Forget about the equation; we just solved. We went through a whole lot of analysis. Can you get some intuition on why this has to be true? Adding more charges to the capacitor will be difficult. Adding more charges to the capacitor will be difficult. No, 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 no. That is okay. I am lo not looking for intuition, uh, very qualitative intuition. I am actually looking for quantitative intuition on why it is. Vs minus V by RC, Vs minus Vc of zero by RC. That is a you are arriving at a quantity, right? Without solving any of the uh, you know differential equations, you can come up with this initial slope. Huh? You can replace it by a voltage source of three volts. Why is that? How do you know that you can replace it that way? You are right, by the way. But how do you know that uh, we are not? That is something we are yet to study in this course, right? So you seem to have picked it up somewhere else. So let us uh, not uh, consider that. Any other quick way to determine what the initial slope is? <laughs> Graph is shifted a little bit. Shifted which way? It is actually not shifted in the left to right. Why is it shifted in the time on the time axis? Is shifted to the left a little bit. No, it's not. It has a very different characteristic. The black graph starts off at zero and then does this. I have not shown this portion. We see zero zero. It is not shifted. In What happened here? It is not shifted in any manner. I have just not shown the uh, black graph for t less than zero. It is a very different graph. It has to be. Any other circuit intuition? Forget the mathematics. Forget the differential equations. What is this? You have an RC circuit, okay? You are trying to analyze what happens when t equal to zero, okay? What is the initial slope that you are trying to find out? dVc by dt, yes? Exactly. So the initial voltage across the resistor at zero plus, okay? The R of zero plus, okay, is three volts. Is nothing but Vs minus Vc of zero. 
What is the then in that case? What is the current flowing through the capacitor? What is I R of zero plus three by R? What is I R equal to I C? I C is nothing but C D V C by D T. Therefore, D V C by D T has to be equal to I R by C. Okay. is nothing but 3 by rc without uh, even solving the differential equation knowing that it's an exponential okay you can find out the initial slope just through purely through circuit integration i did all of you get this uh, the thought process <coughs> okay any questions okay now we can go back to the to the final portion which was so the actual solution can be written in a very specific form uh, which is vs of t i'll write it here it's vc of t sorry is vs plus vc of 0 minus vs exponential minus t by rc okay and this is often called the uh, you know you can this has two terms in it you call it the forced response plus the natural response steady state response plus transient response and so on now this actually this kind of behavior um actually let's let's go back to this where i have written down all of this and then i can explain what each one of these is so this one says it's a steady state response what is a steady state response means what do you understand by steady state huh nothing changes so that seems to be the general idea but actually that's not true right the the actual just because the uh, quantity is time varying doesn't mean it does not have a steady state okay um, in this particular case the steady state response is a constant value okay you can have steady states of circuits where the, the voltages and currents are time varying it is still a steady state okay so in this particular case it happens to be that the uh, steady state response is constant we will later on in the course uh, you know in the second half of the course we will also deal with circuits where the steady state is varying with time the second portion what about the transient response what do you see about the transient response ha huh? which amplitude yeah why is that the amplitude oh okay okay yeah so basically this the second term the transient response is actually dying out with time right so this again may not be true for all circuits okay it is true for a class of circuits which are called stable circuits stable systems okay if you have unstable systems you can have these constant or growing with time okay so in this particular case the transient response happens to be dying out similarly in this particular case the steady state response happens to be constant why is this also called the forced response because this vs that you are applying okay is an externally applied voltage okay that is called also called sometimes called the forcing function okay so if you look at the response part of the response is due to the forcing function and part of it is what is inherent to the circuit which is the natural response of the circuit and again with respect to circuits this is the response of the system for a uh, for this rc circuit so this kind of uh, separating the solution in in these uh, in these two ways forced response plus natural response is also possible for other kinds of systems non electrical systems also uh, you might have seen uh, a tight string which has a natural response right it has a certain mode of it has certain modes right but you can also apply an external if you grab the string and shake it okay you can also if you if you just give it an initial condition it will go by some natural response its own natural response but you can also grab it and shake it at a certain rate for example okay so this is something this kind of split is true for non mechanical I mean, non electrical systems also and of course the second the particular solution plus homogeneous solution is obvious we we did the vc vs equal to 0 at the beginning right so you solve the equation when the forcing function is 0 that gives you the homogeneous solution 
Any questions on what we have done so far? Okay. <laughs> yes. Sorry, you have a question. Okay. So we saw this case for a simple uh, um, RC circuit. Now this can also be drawn in a slightly different way. Now what we did was we said that uh, V S is uh, 5 volts, but inherently we assumed something. Okay, if you look at the response that I have drawn, I said that Vs is, the way it is shown, Vs is less than 0, uh, sorry, Vs is 0 for T less than 0. That is the way I have actually shown it. The way I have actually shown it is this. Okay, that is when you can actually, <coughs> or in some way like this, something like this, right? Now, a different way to draw the same thing. You might have seen circuits like this before. This is another way of representing the same circuit. What is this element called? This element is called a switch. Okay. This element is called an ideal switch. I assume you all know what a switch is. Okay. What are the characteristics of an ideal uh, uh, switch? As an electrical element, if I want to know what the characteristics are, how do how would I define it? Huh? It has two states, so you have to describe the voltages and currents in both those states. Okay. When switch is off, I'll say I'll define it. I'll use the term S. Okay, if S is off, what is it? It's an <coughs> open circuit. If S is on, it's a short circuit. We already know what short circuit and open circuit represent. Okay, so this is one way of seeing it. And then you put this arrow and to show that it's being turned on at a particular time. If you put this arrow and say T equal to 0, it is being turned on at a particular time. It is also common to do this. If you show it in this manner, the arrow in this direction, it means that the switch is being opened at a particular time T1. Okay, this is just to set the terminology straight. Okay, make sure you understand this properly. Don't uh, misread the circuit diagrams in the examinations. Okay, so this is another way of representing the circuit. You might have seen these kinds of circuits before, right? Uh, switches thrown and what happens to the circuit. Now, Suppose I take this circuit, okay. I will draw it with the switch. By the way, it is obvious in the previous case that if the capacitor had an initial uh, voltage across it, that voltage will be preserved because there is no path for the charge to flow when the switch is open. Okay, when the switch is closed, the charge starts to flow depending on the equations we described earlier. And actually, I will draw it without the switch for now because I want to uh, show something very specific. R, C. The quantity of interest is Vc. This is some Vs. Okay. Now, instead of considering a constant Vs, let us say Vs has a certain profile. So, I will draw it out. This is Vs of T. Let us say Vs of T is, I am defining it as 0 for T less than 0. Okay. At T equal to 0, it goes to 1 volt. Okay. But then I tell you at uh, T equal to 5 seconds, it goes to 3 volts. How would you solve this problem? Is it possible to solve this problem? Okay, how would you solve this problem? If I told you find out uh, uh, Vc of uh, uh, T.
the person in the last bench yes what's your name shrikant shrikant how would you solve this problem i want to find out bc of t how would you approach it tell me something tell me how to start off sorry kvl ah uh, what about it what about kvl there is something so generic that you are like saying charges on a capacitor tell me something more specific uh, relevant to this particular problem how would you start what is vc of uh, t for t less than 0 why vs will be 0 okay then what happens at t equal to 0 what happens at t equal to 0 vs becomes 1 volt okay then what happens to vc of t there will be some voltage generated on the capacitor what kind of voltage will it be what kind of profile will it have linear what kind of profile will it have This is what we have been doing last class and this class, right? I just finished mentioning it. <laughs> okay, sit down, sit down. Anybody else? What kind of what will happen at t equal to zero? Huh? Vs will be one volt. Okay. So how will the uh, what will be the profile of Vc of t? So as Shikant pointed out, Vc of T for T less than zero will be zero. Okay, what will happen at zero? At zero plus, it will start rising exponentially, right? So the solution for the system, okay, VC of zero zero. The initial condition across the capacitor is zero. So what will be the equation describing VC of T? So VC of T equal to zero for T less than zero. Okay. vc of t equal to something i want to find out what vc of t is between 0 and 5 seconds what is that ah yes so it is nothing but 1 volt into 1 minus exponential minus t by rt for 0 less than t less than 5 okay what will happen at uh, for t greater than 5 so this will be 1 plus ha ah, why is it 1 plus look at vs ha ah, vs is 3 right so don't make these kind of silly mistakes okay vs is 3 plus so it is the final voltage Okay, plus VC of zero. What do you do for VC of zero? Yeah. So you take VC of five minus three volts exponential minus T by RC. Okay. This will be the expression. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. T minus five. Sorry. <coughs> You're right. Let me fill that in here. okay so this will be the uh, thanks thanks for pointing that out that is an error so this will be the expression for vc of t in other words whenever the uh, first of all the voltage across the capacitor will start rising as an exponential okay now this is one okay now this is getting really bad because let's say one let me try to redraw this
I'll try to redraw it with uh, double the scale. So this is one volt. Okay. Of course, at t equal to infinity, the final voltage across the capacitor has to be three volts. Okay. So it cannot rise larger than this. So I'll I'll put this as the asymptote. Okay. What happens is this is five seconds. It starts rising exponentially, but it cannot reach that. It will reach some value below one volt. Only at t equal to infinity, it will reach five volts. At that point of time, okay, it will reach some voltage, and that voltage will be the initial voltage for the next portion of V S of t. Okay, that will be the initial condition for the next voltage of V S of t. For that portion, the final voltage is three volts. Okay, so it will have some behavior like this. Okay, it will have some behavior like this. So. If left to its own, it would have asymptotically gone to one volt. Okay, if you did not apply a new forcing function, it would have just gone to one volt. But now you are changing the forcing function to three volt. It will do this. Any questions? Very good. Let us take a slightly different uh, problem. Suppose I told you at t equal to zero, Vs goes from zero to five volts. How will you find out Vc of t? So Vs goes from zero to five at t equal to zero. You are interested in the solution only at t greater than zero. <laughs> And same thing for this Vs also. How will you solve this problem? Any any suggestions? Huh? Very good. So what you can do? You want to reduce it to the simple form that you already know, right? And to do that, all you have to do is. Replace this portion by its seven and equivalent. Okay, It's because the left hand side to the left of the capacitor it consists of only voltage sources and resistors. Okay, you just replace that by the seven and equivalent. Okay, if you do that, you will get something like this, which you know how to solve. Right, and if I had given you not just voltage sources but also current sources, you should still be able to do this, right? Because you can still go back and forth between seven and an not an equivalent circuit. Okay, if I had given you a circuit that looked like this, you should still be able to suppose I had given you this. something like this you should still be able to do this because you can still find the seven and equivalent to the left of the capacitor is that okay very good now Let's see. Okay. So let us say this is one farad, two amperes, one ampere, five ohms. I 
I want to find out what Vc of T is. <coughs> How will you find that out? Okay. Okay. So we can, you know, I think when we see the basically, so. Okay. So, so what is that? Huh? Look at the direction of the current source, please. Vc decreases linearly. So, you can again reduce this portion of the circuit. Okay, to a much, much, much simpler system. What is the current source in series with anything? Who, who said voltage source? Okay, a current source with series in series with anything else is simply reduces only to a current source, right? We are trying to find out the Thevenin or not an equivalent circuit. In this case, the not an equivalent circuit is what makes sense. Okay, this 5 ohm doesn't have any significance at all. Okay, so we'll just remove this 5 ohms. Then you just have 2 amperes in parallel with 1 ampere, which is 3 amperes. Okay, so this reduces to a simple case of a 3 ampere current source. Okay, across the capacitor, 1 farad capacitor and we are interested in Vc of T ok, so I will just show, show some Vc of 0 ok, for some, with some Vc of 0 it will reduce linearly ok, here I have shown Vc of 0 as being negative, it could be positive also what is the slope of this line? If you have a constant current flowing through a capacitor, what is the slope of that uh, of the voltage? It is dV by dt, right? I is C dV by dt, so dV by dt has to be I by C. Okay, so just remember this is a very useful thing to remember. So it is minus 3 by 1. So it is just minus 3. Slope is minus 3 in this case. <laughs> is that okay? Any other questions? So, you can see that most circuits can be resolved into simpler versions, okay, to versions that you already know. Is that clear? Now, let us go back to this original case. <laughs> you had Vs, okay, you had R and C. Now, suppose I had uh, I had chosen Vc of t as the desired value, ok, so as a desired quantity but even if I had chosen Ir, Vr and Ic as the quantities of interest what do you think I'll get? What kind of relationship do you think I'll get? Instead of Vc of t, if I try to find out uh, Vr of t, what kind of uh, behavior will that have? That will also be exponential. What will be the time constant? Also Rc. It's not 1 by Rc, it's Rc. Okay, the time constant is Rc. Okay. So, even if you choose to express the differential equations for IR, VR or IC, you will still get a system of equations, okay, with the same time constant. In fact, the homogeneous equation for the system will be exactly the same, okay. You can take this down as a homework, okay. They will all have the same homogeneous equation. we will have the same time constant Rc and same homogeneous equation. You can take this down as a homework. <laughs> now, let us go back. You look at this case. What is R7n here? For this particular case where I had Vsr and Vsr in parallel. What is it?
What is the uh, not an equivalent of Vs in series with R? This is my, if I choose to make both these voltage sources in series with resistance, okay, into current sources, okay, I'll get Vs by R, Vs by R, I'll get R and R. Okay, this is across the capacitor. Okay, what will this reduce to? Yes, you have a question? How can we change the VS, uh, second VS and then R to... Oh, sorry. In this particular case, you are right. Sorry. I meant to redraw it in a slightly different way. I am. Thanks for pointing it out. I did not mean... Okay, so let me... Uh, let me pull up the whole... It's a whole new example. You are right. My mistake. I had meant to use this example. This is R, R, V S, V S and C. Okay. Now if you decide to do this, <coughs> okay. What is the Thevenin equivalent? R by 2. Right? And uh, this is R by 2. Okay, is that clear? So what will happen to the time constant? It will, get, it will become half of what it was in the original case. So for very simple circuits, okay, you can reduce everything, all the forcing functions into one thevenin and one norton, uh, one thevenin and uh, thevenin voltage source and uh, thevenin resistance. Okay, the time constant will be related to the R thevenin times the capacitance. Okay, this may be very different from the actual resistors in the circuit. It will be a combination of all the resistors. Okay, so now I am going to modify the circuit slightly. So this was my original circuit. Okay, now I am going to add a capacitor C here. So I am still interested in VC of T. Vs is still constant. Okay. <laughs> now I am interested and uh, now I am adding an extra capacitor C across the resistor. Now what will happen? Let us say Vs was uh, you know uh, 5 volts and it uh, you know actually goes from 0 to 5, 0 to Vs okay, at T equal to 0. Let us say at T equal to 0 it goes from 0 to Vs. And I am just saying the initial state across capacitors was 0. Okay, what will happen? <laughs> can you please find out the uh, uh, or can you, is it possible to find out Vc of t as a function of uh, R, C, Vs of t and so on? You will have to write down the equations, KVL, KCL, elemental equations and express it, express Vc of t only in terms of the element, these elements and Vs. It is possible. Now, what do you think the order of this equation will be? Second order. Why? First order, why? It is not the same current. Why is it the same current? The current through the capacitors, the two capacitors is not the same. Because you have that resistor. <coughs> Do you think it will lead to a first order or a second order equation? Second order. Second order. Why? Because there are two initial conditions. Because there are two initial conditions. What does the initial condition have to do with the order of the uh, differential equation? You are right in the sense that you, you could have two different two different initial conditions. But, uh, well actually even that is wrong. Why is that? In this particular circuit that is wrong. Can you ever have two differential initial conditions across the capacitor? Across the capacitor? Is it possible to have two differential in, uh, two different initial conditions, independent initial conditions across the two capacitors? It is of course not possible because the minute you define Vs for all time, 
it is not possible to define two separate initial conditions because KVL has to be satisfied okay around this loop so you go around this loop KVL has to be satisfied Vs is nothing but the sum of the voltages across the capacitors okay so you cannot first of all the minute you define Vs without any switches and so on as the circuit is shown here you cannot have two different initial conditions that's number one number two I want you to take this as a homework by tomorrow's class I want you to write down the Vc of t okay in a similar form to what we wrote for the original circuit and I want you to come back and tell me whether it's uh, a first order or a second order system we will continue from this uh, from where we left off here tomorrow morning